Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our video first look and a quick review of the Sonom XP1520. It's also known as the Bolt SL, and this is an unlocked GSM quad band ultra rugged military specified phone. It's a feature phone, it's not a full fledged smartphone, unlike the latest. Uh, you know, ENLW5 that we checked out previously. Uh, but it does still come with a camera in addition to stereo Bluetooth, so you can use it to listen to music wirelessly. And of course, it has all the modern essentials uh, from apps, uh, Java based, that you can install on here. But there's no real app store. It also doesn't, of course, have a touchscreen display. Now, this is obviously meant for a niche audience uh, people who work in construction, maybe work outdoors and fields, and are wary of bringing more fragile phones that uh, might break if they drop it uh, you know, or damage it with water or liquids. Um, otherwise, of course, it's also dustproof. It uh, will withstand drops up to two meters. It has a Corning Gorilla Glass display on the front here, which is ultra strong and resistant to, again, shock. Uh, it also can be submerged in water, up to two meters of water for one hour without breaking. Uh, if we take a quick look at uh, some of the design elements of the phone, it of course is a lot bulkier than your average feature phone or smartphone just because of all the shockproof elements and rubber accents that they built on in. Here it is compared to the ENLW5 that you see here, which is actually a lot slimmer. So this feels definitely more like a brick when you carry it in your pocket than a modern day smartphone. Um, on the side here, you have access to a volume rocker, which is pretty tactile and responsive. There is a hotkey that you can program. The other side features the second programmable hotkey. And under these covers, we have access to a proprietary charging slot that uses what looks like a 3.5 millimeter size. And then there's also the same headphone port. So instead of using micro USB or mini USB, you do have to use a special charger that's included. Uh, on the bottom here, there's actually nothing except for the microphone. And uh, furthermore, on the back, we have just the 1.3 megapixel camera with an LED flash that can be used as a torch or a flashlight. There is a loudspeaker, which gets indeed very loud. And then we have a battery door, which is removable, uh, but you have to use screws to kind of uh, take it out. You can see it proudly, proudly flaunts the IP68 status of being shockproof and waterproof. Um, and underneath here we have access to the battery, which is roughly 2000 milliamp hours and will get you about, um, I would say, five to uh, five days to a week of use before you need to recharge it since um, you're, you're only going to be doing really calling on this phone. Taking a quick look at the main interface here, we have access to a uh, fairly s uh, clean UI. I would say that the experience here is uh, easy to navigate and figure out. There's just the wallpaper, the battery status, time and date, and then finally there's the menu interface that I can access using these two hotkeys. Um, there's also access to a clear key, a back key, talk and end key, which doubles as the power key, five-way navigation toggle with an OK key, and a T9 style keypad for text as well as uh, number entry. It's really tactile and responsive in addition to being risen above the surface, and the backlight is also very bright, so you can still see it outdoors. Um, and I like the fact that the center row is additionally risen above the surface just to make it easier to text by feel. However, I do feel that the keys can be slightly larger, to be completely honest, um, just because the keys themselves do still have a relatively small size, uh, even though they are very tactile and responsive. Anyways, Typing anywhere on the main screen will instantly launch into the dialer pad for uh, for creating a call. And as far as the reception quality is concerned, it works quite well with AT&T here in the Bay Area. We were consistently getting roughly three bars of reception. The microphone is loud and clean, and the earpiece also produces realistic sounds. Uh, so even though it's only a 3G phone and it's not 4G, um, as expected, the sound quality for voice calls is excellent. Next, let's move into some of the other features. Let's go into the menu here, and we see that there is a very tra traditional 4x3 icon layout for all of your apps and programs, and you can access uh, additional calls. I can go into messages for text messages and S SMS. Finally, there is multimedia features on here, media player, so there's a very simple MP3 player on here that uh, also displays your cover art, and uh, you can use that to play back a few tracks. Um, Going back here, there's also the FM radio, which requires the headphones to act as the antenna. And from here, I can change the reception, I can change the channel, and scan through uh, tracks. 
Finally, there's a very simple browser on here that works, but uh, it's, uh, it's best suited for mobile version of sites and for things like weather updates or news updates as opposed to complex desktop versions of, let's say, New York Times. But it works for some emergencies. There's also phone book. Uh, under tools, we have a very basic calendar. There's also an alarm. There's a calculator. There is a unit converter, a world clock, a sound recorder that uses the microphone and actually works quite well, notes, which is a memo pad, stopwatch, and a text reader. So the text reader is basically just going to uh, load back very basic documents that you can uh, store for emergency contacts and directions, but I wouldn't use it as something like an ebook reader, just like on an mp3 player, just because the screen size here is still quite limited. Now speaking of the screen, it actually gets quite bright and it's uh, fairly easy to read even outdoors. Uh, the tempered glass screen here is actually quite strong and again resistant to shock and drops, and the fact that it's using an LCD panel, uh, I can see that the viewing angles are actually still quite good. It's an IPS panel as opposed to just a regular LCD. So as a result, you do have a fairly t good display for uh, navigating the main menus. Under profiles, I can change things like flight mode, meeting mode, stuff like that. That kind of changes the theme and the uh, you know, silencing of the ringtones, stuff like that. Under my file, there is a basic file manager that uh, loads up uh, available memory. There is a micro SD card and a full size SIM card slot both behind the battery door and behind the battery. So it's tucked away all the way on the inside. And uh, down below here, we have access to applications, which again, Java or Java-based. So any Java-based app, whether it's a very simple game or a utility program, will run just fine. You can sideload them by dragging them into the memory when you uh, sync it up to your computer, or uh, you can download something very quick from the web. Here we have settings, so I can change things like my uh, language, I can change the display brightness, uh, hearing aid, firmware updates changing and creating a password, changing and turning Bluetooth on or off for uh, connecting to a speaker or a pair of earphones, stuff like that. Finally, there is the camera. And again, the camera at 1.3 megapixels seems quite low. It's a fixed focus sensor, it's not autofocus, so um, it's definitely not going to be super impressive, but you can see that images are fairly quick to be captured. Uh, and you do have a fairly natural looking reproduction of color, although not everything will be really sharp or in focus all the time, just because uh, since it's a fixed focus camera, it performs best outdoors when there is uh, uh, objects are further away from the lens. From here, I can also do things like delete it. I can go into a photo editor and uh, change things like the size. I can also add a frame, add an effect, and kind of play around with that. I can also send this image to friends and family using SMS, uh, text message, message or using Bluetooth. The interface here for the most part is pretty clean. I can also use the uh, volume keys here to kind of zoom in and out of my uh, objects. Uh, it's a digital zoom though, so it does degrade the uh, resolution even further. I can change things like white balance. Uh, in addition, I can switch into video recording mode and that will record video clips up to 480p resolution. So overall, pretty simple and uh, not anything to write home about, but it works in emergencies. And uh, I like the fact that there is a camera on such a basic uh, or a basic phone that really isn't meant to, to compete with smart devices. So that's pretty much everything for the Sonom Bolt XL. This is definitely not a phone for the average consumer. It's more meant for people who work in industries or in fields where they consistently have to go and travel uh, in construction zones in dangerous places that uh, won't fare well for regular phones that shatter or break easily. And they're not uh, afraid to carry something that's slightly bulkier and takes up more size. Uh, it's military specified, at the same time isn't quite as dumb as the perception of a feature phone seems to be in 2006. 17, since it's capable of running any Java program, it's capable of doing very light web browsing, and it does have Bluetooth and that camera. Uh, but at the same time, it does retain a very traditional uh, cell phone design. Call quality is excellent. I do wish sometimes that the D-pad and controls would be slightly larger, since uh, they are slightly small and cramped near the bottom, but for the most part, it works quite well. The display is also quite bright, and obviously having a very rugged phone uh, will come in handy if you do get it wet or drop it consistently. So that's been, again, the Sonom uh, Bolt SL, and you can check out more details in our written article coming out soon. But this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.